Uh, all right, so we're going to do lesson six from current unit, uh, the unit three from whatever. Okay, so we're going to continue using functions. In fact, we're going to continue using functions forever. Like I said before, one of three or four like main concepts in programming that we're going to deal with for the entire year. But we are going to work on how to decide what becomes a function and using functions to solve problems. Okay. And so for lesson six, we're going to work with or try to solve problems using top down design. Okay. Last time we did bottom up design with the draw diamond, which we started with its smallest problem, which was drawing a step. Then we found its next smallest problem was draw side, which used draw step. And then we solved the next or the final problem, which was draw diamond, which just called draw side three times. We're going to do the opposite for this one. We're going to start at the end or start at the top and uh, solve the problem that way. Now, this lesson, there exists a worksheet for this lesson. But it's not realistic in that when you're programming and solving problems, you're probably just going to start programming. You're going to go straight into whatever text editor or design environment that you're using and just start typing either code or comments and not get out a worksheet and that sort of thing. We will do worksheets later on when we have more uh like actual design concerns, like where uh, interface, where buttons go on a on a screen, and where the drop downs go, and that sort of thing, um, it is more useful for a worksheet there. But instead of doing the worksheet where we write out the functions that we're going to use, we're going to go straight to Bubble uh, Two, and we're going to use comments to plan. Okay, once again, strong recommendation for full screen. And our goal is to end up by end up with uh, a program that will draw this shape. Okay, so um, let's start by doing some comments. Okay, so you can switch to text mode and do slash slash. And that will create a comment. You can also, in the function uh, toolbox, you can still also drag out a comment. It's the same thing. I do recommend going into text mode so that you can, wow, that was weird, so that you can add a white space, which will keep things a little bit more organized as you go. Okay, so let's start at, we're going to start with, um, start at the end or start at the top level. What is our biggest function going to be? Well, if for draw diamond, the highest level function, what, or for the last one, draw diamond was our highest level function. And even though it came at the end, um, it's the was still the highest level. We are starting at the, the highest level and working backwards. So our highest level function is going to be draw, I think we're referring to this as a snowflake. And let's do open, close parentheses, just so that we know that's the name of a function. And let's decide what it does. What is it going to do? Well, this is when we need to decide what are the smaller components of this. Okay. The way that I look at it is I see four crosses at a 90 degree um, orientation from each other. Uh, you could see five even sized T's, one, two, three, four, and five. That is also how you could break it down. Um, I don't know. You could break it down a bunch of different ways, but I'm going to say that it's four separate crosses so my function draw snowflake is going to 
um, uh, draw four uh, crosses. There you go. Draw snowflake, draws four crosses. Okay, so the next one, our next lower level function needs to make one of those crosses. So how about let's call it draw cross, open close parentheses. Um, this would be draws one of the four crosses. Okay, so we have a function draw cross. Obviously we haven't defined it yet, but so I, in theory, we will have a function called draw cross that will make a single one of these. Okay, well, what is this made up of? Well, it's made up of, it's gonna be two forward movements. And then there are three separate sort of bars that are uh, gonna be a forward and two lefts and a forward to get you back to the center. Um, I suppose you could look at it as like two that are two forwards each. I don't know. I'm going to look at it as three of a forward, a double left, and then another forward to get you back to the center. And so um, let's say, let's call that draw, draw arm. So next comment, let's just call it draw arm. And um, draws one of the three arms on each cross. Okay. And we will look for opportunities to add other ones, other uh, functions as they are needed. Okay. So let's go ahead and define this okay so well we know we're going to end with a draw snowflake so let's go ahead and call it okay draw snowflake is the fun our main function and we are going to call it or we're going to call it we need to define it okay draw snowflake like we said is just draw cross four times. And yes, we are calling a function that doesn't exist yet, but that's pretty common in programming where it does require you to have some like planning in your head of where you're going. But as you're solving a problem, you might think, oh, I'm going to want this tool to be used several times. How about I just go ahead and call it now, and then we'll go ahead and define it shortly. Because as you're solving a problem, you may have stumbled apart, stumbled upon where that function is needed. And you just go ahead and call it, and then you figure out the specifics later. And that is the point of this top down, is you're using a tool, calling a tool that doesn't exist yet. Okay, so draw cross. Um, we need to define draw cross. Okay, so draw cross let's see here um if we could do how is this going to work well draw cross let's go ahead and get going with a move forward a move forward that'll put us here and let's go ahead and call draw arm once we're at the middle we can call draw arm and that means we need to define draw arm Okay, and each one of these arms, I'm going to make it with a forward, a double left, and a forward. Okay, so let's see what we have so far. So um, the problem, one of the downsides of top-down is it's difficult to debug this function when draw cross isn't completed yet which draw arm isn't completed yet. So in order to simplify things, what we're gonna do is comment out three out of four of these so that we can work on just solving one cross and then bring them back in. 
The way you comment out, which is sort of deactivating, is you can highlight all three lines and do control forward slash. That will comment them out. You can also do just have your cursor on that line and do control slash and it will comment out or comment in each of them. You can also just go to the beginning of the line and put two slashes and it will comment them out. And this is just an improvement on deleting it and coming back later, putting it back in. It's like temporarily deleting it or deactivating. It. Okay, so we are at this point trying to solve draw cross. And draw cross, we have move forward, move forward. And that puts us here at the center of one of the cross crosses. And then if we call draw arm, we will get, if we're already pointed north, so it'd be up and back. Let's just see what happens, okay? So we're there, let's do a turn left and then another arm. Let's see what happens there. That should point us due west. And then we're already pointed west. Let's go ahead and do another arm. Okay. And then we need to get back to the beginning because this whole draw cross has to end ready to draw the next one. So we need to get back to the beginning and um, have it ready. So then we could use a we could use a setup function which let's um actually where we are now we could have we need to get back to the beginning so it's going to be like three lefts two forwards and that should put, get us back to the beginning facing due south and then one more left okay so this is a little bit all over the place but we've drawn this draw cross function we'll draw a single cross and leave it set up facing ready for the next one so we should in theory be able to comment in all three the other three and should in theory work huzzah okay so Let's see if we can refactor this. Let's look for things that are a little bit uh, unwieldy. Okay, so we have a triple left here, which we could write the right function to do that. Um, we have a couple of forward, a double forward and a left. Okay, so the way that we're doing each cross where we're coming to this intersection, doing the vertical one, then turning left and doing the horizontal ones across is a little bit clunky, where if you think about the way we did all four crosses where we finished one and ended 90 degrees off of where we started to call the next one, we can do that also at, so we go two forward and then left. If we go two forward and then left, and then at the end of each draw arm, we add an extra left. It would, it should do the same thing. Let me uh, comment out a few things since we're re working on cross. Comment that out and comment out a bunch of those. And I think that, okay, so here we have one arm that just goes, does left one and finishes with a left to point up. So if we add another arm, it should finish pointing due east, ready for another arm. There we go. And then we're facing south for uh, this, which should get us back to the beginning, ready for the other one. And if we comment back in those three, it should work the same way. <coughs> Excellent. Okay. So now if we look at this, we can look at this one more and see we have a forward, forward, left twice. Okay. This is doing what? It's setting up so that we can call our draw arm three times. Why don't we give it its own function? 
and let's call it setup. And setup is just going to be forward, forward, left. And then anywhere we have um, move forward, move, do that, we can replace it with, no, not that one, with setup. There we go. So we're calling setup at the beginning of each cross, beginning and end of each cross, which gets us back to there. All right, so this is a little less clunky than before. Um, and the point of this is not that you are able to draw this. The point is that you're experiencing this problem solving process starting top down. Okay. Uh, whichever way you did it is fine, whether it had the a completely different way, um, like looking at it as five different, you know, equilateral T's or uh, you did that first way where we went straight up and then did the horizontal ones, that's fine. As long as you have functions that use other functions. You need to do this with an example of abstraction. When you're finished, I can't tell if you solved it bottom up or top down, but you cannot have 100 blue blocks on this that just solve the entire thing one at a time. Okay, I've seen that before. It is so much work. But there are students who are like, well, I understand what move forward and turn, turn left means. So I'm just going to have, I'm just going to move forward and turn left and move forward the entire thing. That is not okay. Okay, it may be easier than learning this, but it is not easier than learning this in the long run. Okay, so bubble three. Bubble three is the good old um, three by three square or grid. And we're gonna solve this top down like we did the, um, the last one. So let's go ahead and com do some comments. Where are we? Okay, so what is our highest level function gonna be? How about draw grid? Um, and this, what is this gonna do? It's gonna draw three rows. Okay, what's the next one? How about draw row? Uh, draws three boxes and uh, draw a box. This is not that hard, draw a box. Uh, draws one box. Okie dokie. All right, so let's see, we've got, let's go ahead and define draw grid. And draw grid is gonna be draw row. Draw rocks, draw row. Three times. And draw row, let's define draw row. Draw row is going to be draw box three times. And if you recall, um, there's sort of, if we're drawing the three boxes where we end, somehow we need to get back to the beginning. And we're going to just sort of hard code it uh, with just a bunch of blue uh, blocks and to see if we can find a uh, thing later, find some uh, a good function to solve our problem uh, after we have look at a bunch of the blue commands on there and we'll see if we see patterns. Okay, so we need to draw box is our most basic, our lowest level function. Okay, so in order, and we also need to call our highest level function, draw grid at the top. All right, and I'll put another line in there. I'll give myself some white space at the bottom if I need to drag it around. Okay, so draw grid, 
calls draw row three times, but I want to solve a single row. So I'm going to comment out two of these draw rows in order to solve draw row. Draw row calls draw box three times. Uh, yeah, I think I can deal with that. Okay, draw box. Since we still only have the left turn, it is going to make sense to start out with a triple left to face, I don't know, east, so that we can make all of our shapes with left turns. So I think we're going to start the entire program with a triple left. If we may want to do that right turn function where we use triple left so that we can all we only need to call right but we'll deal with that in a second okay so starting we have just the triple left let's see what draw box does so box is clearly going to be move forward and turn left four times okay and let's see what happens okay it's not going anywhere that's because every draw box does the same thing we will need to advance it to be ready for the next box. Now we can either put a move forward after each draw box, that will work. But since we need it after each draw box, let's just put it in the draw box and then we don't need it in here because every time draw box is called, it will be included. Okay, so that puts us there. And just like before, in order to have this work, for three in a row, we need to get it back to its setup point, which is over here facing due east. So at the end of the row, let's go ahead and do a left, a forward, another left, a triple forward. And that should put us in the right spot, but facing west. And so that means we need two lefts to turn around. Can already tell this is feeling a little clunky. It's a little, a lot of blue in the same place, which means there might be an opportunity for a function to uh, refactor it a little bit, but we'll deal with that for now. So a single draw row gets us three boxes and puts us back in the right place. So let's um, comment in the other rows. Okay, and let's comment in the third one. Puts us here and um, at the end, we can either um, put it after draw grid or uh, after draw grid in our sequence of here or inside of draw grid, which it doesn't really matter. But since we're at the top, and which way are we facing? East. By the time we get to the end, we need a triple left to go to face due south. Then a triple forward to get back to the starting point. And then a double left to face north again. Okay, so this works. It is a little clunky at the beginning. And let's see if we can find, so we have triple left twice, which is a classic, the right turn, um, but we only have it twice. We have a triple forward one, twice, but the tri triple left, triple forward don't happen <clears throat> next to each other. Um, if you count double left, we have double left three times, four times. I don't know. Once you get to a point where it works, after that, it's not super critical. Um, uh, I can't answer that right now. And I don't know. We could leave it there. Um, I don't know. Let's think about if we were doing a much larger project, we probably would want a right turn function. We'll just call it right. And that's 
let's call that one put our triple left in there and then any place we have triple left we can get rid of and just call right love that and uh, what's going on here oh because it's not reset uh, really what is going on here okay right okay and it still should work okay and so we ha still have a triple forward we only have one no we have double two triple forwards how about uh let's call this um forward three and we'll put three forwards in there and any place where we have three forwards we can call forward three and where else do we have three forwards we have three forwards up here And it still works good. And I mean, we have a double left, a couple other, but at this point, we're sort of uh, getting to the point where it's not a huge help. Either way, uh, let's call it there. Okay, so let's take a look at the checks for understanding from this lesson. So, bubble, the next one, bubble four. Bubble four is a question based on the performance task, which the performance task is one of the names for the project in the spring that we will have plenty of time in class to do. But part of it is a written response. Again, plenty of time in class to do. But it has several parts and writing prompts and a um, rubric or criteria okay so the question that they're trying to relate to and have you practice writing a response for is about the design process and iterative development okay and the question on the writing prompt for the uh, performance task um, asks you to describe an incremental and iterative process that you came across in your program that you made for the project, uh, describe difficulties and opportunities, and uh, discuss whether or not you did it on your own, which you will do everything on your own in this class anyway. Um, okay, for this, we are, all you need to do is write briefly about the, uh, development process for the snowflake okay don't overthink it uh or the either the snowflake or the grid and i don't know it's not a great prompt because it is a trying to get you to follow a writing prompt for a much larger project which this was a three minute project anyway um but either way, you're practicing writing about the development process, abstraction, that sort of thing. Okay, uh, bubble five, top-down design. Okay, consider the figure below. Use top-down design. Uh, think about solution to a problem. This space provided, write a list of just the names of the functions you would use to write, uh, to draw this figure. Think about the stage of design when we were just writing the comments. Okay, we had draw grid okay then the next function was draw row and the next function was uh draw box okay break this up into small components and come up with names of functions that you would use for them okay number six is multiple choice okay which following statements about writing and top-down design is not true and find the one okay and managing complexity so the point of abstraction is about simplifying and managing complexity. You create task, 
Uh, you will be asked to identify an abstraction in the program and explain how it helps manage the complexity of your program. Functions are forms of abstraction. Pick a function you wrote in your solution to the three by three square problem and explain how it manages complexity of your program. How does it simplify? How does it, so the alternative to using functions would just be having a hundred blue uh, commands on your uh, program code, which would be ridiculous. How does using functions manage the complexity of that? Okay, so there you go. There's lesson six. And let me know if you have any questions.